Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So um, it's a roasting hot day today, it's like boiling the bag um, and I'm here in the shed and it's boiling the bag in here as well and um, yeah so I thought I'd do something cool, uh, you see what I did there and um, so I'm going to do cocktail glasses um, because they're always cool um, and most of the stuff I have is kind of like 30 stuff so, um, so yeah um, it is a very period thing. I don't know if really people are still doing cocktail. Well, I'm sure they are because there's cocktail bars and everything, but um, it, it's a 30s thing is where it came from. So um, I'm gonna show you what it was like in the start. So I hope you enjoy this. So um, this is the first glass I'm gonna show you. Um, I don't know who made it. I've had suggestions it's white fries, but I can't quite get that to match up. Um, yeah, it's very stylish with a white base, white glass. Some people call it milk glass. Um, there's no pontal mark on there. It's very nicely made. As you can see the, how it's made and everything is, yeah, proper lead crystal. Um, but classically 1930s. Um, the white frass one with the white bases, 1930s, 1933, I think they were making them. So I'm kind of guessing it's around that period. This is the first reference I'm going to show you, Whitefriars Glass, Art of James Powell and Sons, uh, by uh, Leslie Jackson. And uh, yeah, so these white ones I was talking about, here they are. And look at this, so, sort of like if you look at it from here down, it looks exactly the same. But the way this glass is attached, see there's a little collar there. It's not the same, whereas the other one, the glass actually goes over the edge that way, that way. So even if it was a wider glass, I, it would be, there wouldn't be this little lip here, I don't think, anyway. So, yeah, so I've looked in here, it looks like this, but there's something a bit different about it. Also, the catalog, online catalogs, I think there's like a 1931 and 1938, and this talks about 1933, and there's two big gaps, so these don't appear at all, so I don't even know if there's any other shapes that are like this. So, I can't say it's like this. If I had hold of one of these and you were able to turn it over and look and see if it had a pontal mark, then you might and get a better feel for what this was like. Um, you might be able to say or not, but I don't think so, just based on this little picture. So here's the next glass I'm showing you. Um, this one is made by um, Ekenas. It's Swedish. Um, designer is Greta Rundberg Tell. Um, and she worked there in 1942 to 52, I think. And uh, yeah, so I like this because the cockerel is kind of very dynamic, swirly, moving. And um, yeah, it's got a step in the base. Um, I know that Orifers did this as well, but um, yeah, this is a really nice gloss. It's got a polished pontal. I will. I've only got online references for this style of glass, so but I will um, show you those. So I'm looking here at um, a Swedish kind of help you ID your antique um, stuff. What's it called again? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, there it is. Princess N San Antique and samala form anyway yeah so someone's put this up which is a echinus and you can see the foot is just like my glass and then as you scroll down there is someone a nice person puts this on now i have seen this as an advert and i've been looking like crazy i can't find it but here you go these are the glasses that are like my glass um, they're slightly different shapes there are more forms than this I know it comes in yellow because if I bunt around on the internet, there are yellow ones for sale. And it tells you when um, Greta, <coughs> sorry, Greta Thun Runberg Tell was alive and also when she worked at Echinus. There you go. So I'm showing you another um, non UK glass. Um, this is Bohemian, it's cold painted which means, um, yeah, it's literally paint that's been put on there. Um, you can see that it's like coming off in a few places. 
if I was to have a real shot at it with my fingernails, I could re wreck this quite quickly. Um, there is no pontal mark on this, so um, it is hand blown. It is, I think, I believe it. Oh no, it's not lead crystal. I don't think that is. That's a bit. Or if it is, it's very low quantity because it's a bit plinky there. Um, so yeah, this is either post pre or post war. It's very vague, but it's so it's so nice. I just thought I'd dig it out and show it to you. It's so pretty. So here's a Stuart Crystal one uh, from the 1930s. It's a real classic one with a look at the nice trumpet bowl. Um, it's got little ellipses cut into it and the stylized flowers, vertical bars. Um, yes, it is lovely. The um, This is a, I said, a 1930s design. I believe it's designed by a guy called Ludwig Kanai, who was the chief designer at Whitefriars in the 30s. Um, there were other designers, but this is very one of his, just stylistically. Um, and yeah, I do have the decanter to go with this, and the decanter is unusual in that the stopper has a trumpet shape like that. So it has like a ball, and then the peg underneath. That, and um, the stopper, in fact, the whole thing, so it's got a clear decanter, and then it was stopper with a ball and a trumpet shaped um, thing. And you can actually see, if you look at my, um, on my video on interwar conical decanters on the part one, you'll actually see the decanter that goes with this. So the book I'm showing you here is uh, British Glass Between the Wars by Roger Dodsworth. And um, yeah, here's the glass here that we were looking at. It's got a different pattern on it, but this is exactly the same shape. Um, apologies, by the way, I did say, I've just been looking back at what I said in the shed, and um, and I did say that he was the chief designer at, um, Ludwig Kanai was the chief designer at Whitefriars, and I did actually mean to say Stuart Crystal. So um, um, yeah, so that was a mistake there. But yeah, so the base of these, they come in um, amber and green, it's usually like a uranium green and um, yeah, if, you, if you look back here it gives you dates as well um, so it's saying circa 1935 but then it tells you the pattern number 26801 introduced in 1934 so um, there you go that's quite a nice tight date for you so this little cocktail glass is um, Thomas Webb it's a bit smaller than the others it's got no stem at all um, the pattern is called fur cone. If I can get it at the right angle, it's a kind of. Um, can I get it to show you? It's very subtle, but it's it's um, like a scale pattern, and um, yeah, with a purple base. Um, they they made these um, with the the wave pattern as well. Um, some people are telling me it's also called uh, Venetian Ripple, that pattern, so oh, I haven't seen a reference for that though. But um, yeah, it's a quite a sweet little glass. It's much thinner than what you normally expect from Webb, and it is. Um, yeah, it is lead crystal. It's high pitched because it's quite small. Um, yeah, that, that's a sweet little glass. I do have decanters to go with these, and at some point I will do some stuff on web, and I'll show you all together, and jugs as well. So the um, book I'm showing you to go with um, that glass I'm showing you is um, Miller's Glass of the 20s and 30s by Frank Lieber, and it's not an exact match in that what I've got is a decanter, but you can see that it is the, it's in that same purple with the fur cone pattern. Um, and all he's saying here is decanter by Webb, 1930s, and not much else. This glass is, um, I believe this is a 1930s one as well. Um, this one's Webb Corbett with an acid etched cocker on it. Can you see here? Um, and underneath it's um, marked. Web Corbett, 
made in England. It's like a made an arch of Webb Corbett and then made in England going through it underneath the arch. I'm back here with uh, Miller's glass of the 20s and 30s. In the back it's got some marks and here is the mark we're talking about. It tells you above, Webb Corbett Limited, blah, blah, blah. Mark used 1930 to 47. I don't have any book references for that glass, but um, at least I've got a reference for the, the mark that's on it. So this is a Thomas Webb glass. I am not 100% certain this is supposed to be a cocktail glass, but it's so pretty I'm just not going to show it, miss it, showing it here. It's got a lovely um, bobbin stem with little bubbles cut into it. Uh, and then underneath it's, um, it's marked. It says Web England, and um, I will show you this mark because this is not the usual mark. I'll tell you what years it's from. So I'm back with British Glass Between the Wars by Roger Dodsworth, and um, yeah, the Web of England is 1950 to 1966. Obviously, if I was going to show you that other one with the bubbles on as a cocktail glass then I've got to show you this one because it's exactly the same shape but with a different pattern with the um, ripples that look like um, this is called a wave um, this pattern uh, some people call it a uh, Venetian ripple I don't know if that's definitely I haven't seen a thing for that but um, yeah it's got this one the mark says it's got web in the middle and then made in England in a circle around it. So still with um, British glass between the wars. Um, here's that glass that we were looking at. And um, yeah, he calls it wine glass in here. But anyway, it's still got the, it says it's marked web made in England and 1930s. So there you go for that one. So this is a little um, white fries glass. Um, this is from the M62 range, however, I can't remember what, what it's called with this on, I'll need to look it up. So, it was designed by Barnaby Powell in 1933, um, this colour's golden amber by the way, and then a few years later William Wilson came along and, and put these, these, these lines to go on it, to jazz it up a bit, and um, I don't even know which is the more common, I have the cocktail shaker to do and I'll do a, a general video on White Fries M62 because I have decanters as well so yeah so it's a sweet little glass and um, it is very small but as it does actually go with a cocktail shaker it's definitely a cocktail glass. I'm back here with the uh, White Fries glass Leslie Jackson book and on the same page as these glasses that we were just looking at from the M62 range, um, only when it has these lines on it, it changes and it becomes pattern number 9047. Yeah, there you go. Um, a real jump in nomenclature, I think is the word I use there. So there you go. So this is a bit of a two for one. Um, these are Stuart Crystal um, Stratford pattern and um, yeah, they're not marked, and um, but they're really cool shapes. So yeah, these are. I think these are cocktail glasses just because of the the bowls are just. Most of the others that don't have this kind of like wider bowl look or foreshortened bowl. Um, so yeah, they're really nice. So here we are looking at the um, Stuart Crystal um, 1927 catalog. And um, yeah, the Stratford pattern is here. Um, there's other more Stratford on other pages, but this is the shape of glass we were looking at. Let me get it up close and uh, see if I can get it, see it better. Yep, yeah, the short foreshortened bowl, and it's in the cocktail section. So, um, so that's fairly clear there. So I'm going to do what I consider to be tall, tall um, cocktail glasses. And this is the first one I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show off my um, gaping holes in my knowledge again. So I don't know who made this. It's a really cool glass. 
This is very 1930s color, this bass. And um, yeah, yeah, nice ring. But yeah, I have no idea who made this. But um, yeah, this style, uh, I've seen them with cocktail shakers. So I know that these tall ones were also used um, for cocktails as well. So I've got a few and I'll show them now. So here we are with the um, Thomas Webb. Uh, this is a wave pattern. It um, doesn't have a mark on it. You can see it's wave because it um, makes a square shape when you look at it from above. And you'll see this on vases and all sorts of other things. Um, I think I previously mentioned it's also called um, Venetian Ripple by some people, but um, I need to find a reference for that. And here's another Thomas Webb one. Um, this one is a bit like the no, it's actually a different shape because it's wide at the bottom, it has a slight curve, so it's not as angular as the other one. Um, this pattern is called Cascade, and um, yeah, there's no mark on this. Um, this does come with decanters, and I'll, I will um, do a video specifically on this suite of glasses with these types of glasses and jugs and decanters. and. Um, if you look at it from above, it's six-sided, which um, you can see the cascade pattern there. And it's very like the, um, well, it's pretty much the same as the uh, White Friars ripped wave pattern. Um, but what you'll see is that, well, I don't know if someone, someone might be able to refute this. So I see this, web equivalent of rib wave like this is always on um, tableware and um, whereas the the um, white fries is always on vases and, and um, art bowls effectively but um, not on tableware you won't see it on glasses and things now someone may, might um, get me wrong on that and uh, I'll be happy to see that in the comments if I have got that wrong. So one last glass. Um, and this one is a bit of a cry for help because I was given this by someone that lives in France. And yeah, I have no idea who made it, when it was made. I believe this is um, a post-war glass. I think it's French. It's probably somewhere like Baccarat. But um, yeah, if you recognize this glass, it's not marked. Um, yeah, it's very stylish, very, I think, very French myself. But, um, yeah, I've got no reference for that. Um, he just gave me a few random glasses, and that was one of them. And, um, yeah, I have no idea. So, yeah, if you, if you know what that glass is, please help me out. So, I'm back in my office, and I'm showing you these three... Stuart Crystal enameled glasses and it's just showing you the range of shapes of glasses that you have as uh, white fries um, yeah I'm just checking that one's Mark Stuart England uh, that one's got the reg number and the word Stuart um, and yeah that one's got the reg number and Mark word Stuart as well so yeah um, these two are, are molded with the Stratford pattern which is this kind of ringed pan which is used on a lot of things this one's got virtually no stem it's just got a knob um, this one's got an inverted baluster stem this one's got a drawn stem yeah they, these are and they're all enameled and that's the thing that brings them together um, and there is another video on Stuart Crystal enamel glass and all of these appear as part of full sets so you can see uh, that there is actually more to these than what you're seeing here um, but yeah, it just this is just to um, illustrate the variations that you get in in cocktail glasses. That there's not just like one set sort of like triangular pattern that you quite often see. Um, there was a lot going on. Sticking with the um, 1927 pages I was showing you earlier, so these are the enameled ones I've got. So you've got ones that are this shape, which is a stemless cocktail according to this here. And then um, you've got ones that are more this shape, but it's um, 
This one is not um, in the Stratford pattern with the rings on it. That's the Arundel pattern. And then you've got ones that are kind of like this. So there's lots of different shapes they're deploying here for um, cocktail glasses. But yeah, so but these are all cocktail glasses. So I hope you enjoyed that. And by the power of technological magic, um, I'm going to go back to the house now and do a bit more filming because I have a couple more glasses to show you and also to pick out all the reference books. Yeah, um, the sun's starting to go down, so I've just got to get the hell out of Dodge. Um, you know I've got a lot more glass here. I think I've, I've found most of it. Um, what you don't see is behind behind the camera, and there's like a huge cupboard full of glasses, and I've had to pick through that to get these out. And um, yeah, so and also just over here, yeah, I have unopened boxes of glass. So yeah, there's. I'm sure I've got more to show, uh, and maybe at some other time when I've actually um, sorted some through some things, I might do a part two. Um, but anyway. So that's how it is for today and um, thank you very much for watching this and please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.